Hi, I'm Dan Ritter. I'm a product manager at Sontech. I'm out here today at Penasquitos Creek in San Diego. I'm here with Chris Irasi from Marketing. She's behind the camera. And today we're going to talk about one of our most popular products here at Sontech, the Flow Tracker 2. Uh, we're going to look inside the case and see when you get that Flow Tracker 2 fresh from your order, what's going to be inside the case. We're going to talk a little bit about how to put everything together and get ready to take a measurement and talk a little bit about how to do a beam check and just get all set up so you can get in the water and get your first waiting discharge measurement. So let's uh, open the case and take a look inside. Um, for those of you who have ordered a flow track or two or are thinking about it, uh, this case is actually the case that comes with our uh, optional waiting rod kit. So if you order just the probe and the handheld, you'll get a smaller case that fits just those two. Um, but if you order the waiting rod kit, you get this you can get this big case that will fit everything in it. Uh, so open it up. One of the first things we can see back here, we have our quick start guide. Super helpful uh, if you need to refer to something to help you get set up in your, if you're out in the field or getting ready to do a measurement. It'll walk you through everything you need to know uh, to get ready to go. Uh, then in here we have our Flow Tracker 2 probe. This is really where the work happens. You can see here is our acoustic transmitter and our receivers that uh, <coughs> measure the velocity for us. So our Flow Tracker 2 is our acoustic Doppler velocimeter. Uh, you may be familiar with the, flow, the original Flow Tracker. It's the, one of the best sellers we've had at Sontech, and this is our updated version. Uh, this right here is our 2D, standard 2D probe. We also offer a 2D, 3D probe that will get you uh, velocity in X, Y, and Z directions if you need that. And both our 2D and our 3D probe. You can also add an optional pressure sensor too that will help you if you're trying to take a depth, or if you, uh, it will help you make sure that your depth measurements are as accurate as possible. Uh, next in here, we have our uh, handheld unit. This is kind of the brains of the, the operation. This will uh, run the probe and tell it what to do and uh, also help you walk you through the steps that you need to take a waiting discharge measurement. So we'll pull that out in a few minutes and get that started up as well. And then also in here, we have some battery packs and, and a few other things that we need to put it together. Uh, there's always a USB with our instruments that'll have your software on it. And then we have our optional waiting rod. So we'll uh, pull this waiting rod out and get it put together to, so we can uh, get ready for, uh, for a measurement. Now, if you've never put together a two-piece top setting waiting rod, uh, the important thing to know as you're starting off with is you're going to want to first screw together this larger fixed rod, and that'll make sure that you can get it all together correctly. And uh, one thing that we love about our waiting rod, we have these alignment arrows here that'll help you know that you've got it uh, screwed together and correctly and, and, and tightened to the appropriate amount. Uh, this version of the rod is our English waiting rod. We also sell a metric version. So this one has increments in tenths of feet. Uh, every, every line is a tenth of a foot. Double lines indicate uh, half feet uh, increments and then triple lines indicate uh, full feet. So now that we've got the fixed rod together, we can put our uh, movable rod together. Um, so we'll squeeze the handle up here and uh, get it put together. Another thing that we love about our waiting rod here is uh, you'll notice the nice blue handle. Uh, we love that color not just because it's uh, Sontech blue, but you'll notice that the numbers on here are clear and easy to read. So when you're out there in the stream getting ready to take your measurement, you can see exactly where you need to go uh, to just make things quick and easy. We've also got this bubble level that comes on here. This will help you kind of get oriented as you're out in the stream, try to get your rod upright. And then once you're there, you can look, we have the tilt sensor in the probe and that will tell you how level the probe is. And that appears on the screen as, a, as this bubble level that looks a lot like this and help you get that probe exactly level so you can get the most accurate and precise measurement possible. Our waiting rod is also built with this uh, <coughs> handy mount right here so that you can attach your handheld easily to it. The, uh, the Flow Tracker 2 will work with any waiting rod, but uh, you know the accessories that come on this waiting rod make it super simple to set up and get ready to use. So we just screw this on. 
This also will allow us to, you know, keep our handheld at the right height and uh, adjust it so that, you know, it's easy to see for uh, whether you're tall or short or somewhere in between. And then down here, we have our attachment where we'll put on our probe. So it's easy to just slide it, slide the probe in and screw it in so we're nice and secure. Uh, it's best to make sure that you get the, the hole, the screw in the hole so that the probe is secure and not moving around. Once we've got our probe attached, we can uh, attach it to the handheld. Then we take our battery case, we can pop it in, and we're ready to go. Now the great thing about the batteries here is they're, you can pack an extra set, and if you're taking measurements and you run out of battery midstream, you'll, uh, you'll be able to pop out the, em the empty batteries, put in a set of full batteries, and it'll start right up where you left off. So now we're starting up the handheld, it's gonna warm up, we'll get ready to take a beam check. Uh, the beam check is going to give us some QA, QC data to make sure that everything is running properly uh, in the flow tracker too. This is something that you can do before you leave the office to make sure that everything's running smoothly before you get out to the field to take your measurement. And then before you take a measurement, the flow tracker 2 is also going to prompt you to do another beam check. Uh, the beam check is going to give us some information on things like signal to noise ratio, noise, temperature, and just make sure that the probe is all working the way that we need it to. All right, so now that the, pro the handheld is warmed up and ready to go, we'll come over here. We can put our probe in the water. So to do a quick beam check, we'll go to utilities. We can hit automated beam check, and then we just hit start. It's gonna start bringing up our uh, beam check data. You can see that uh, it's going to take about 20 samples, which takes 20 seconds or 20 to 30 seconds to do. Um, if you want to look at other parameters, you can push up and down. So noise level, peak level, peak position. And then once it's done, it'll tell us that the beam check passed. We're all ready to go and ready to take a measurement. So that's where we're going to stop today. If there's any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Otherwise, uh, we'll finish up and uh, please follow us on social media and let us know if you have any questions by sending us an email at inquiry at sontech.com.